Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe now for future content. Sit back, relax, enjoy, and stay sinful. Story number one. My story goes back to around 2004. My family and I had just moved into a new house that was just built. My brother and I got our own rooms, but for some odd reason I was terrified of the room that was now mine. I remember the first night sleeping in there. I woke up in the middle of the night confused. My parents put me in there after I fell asleep in the living room. I woke up feeling weird, like someone was watching me, and I instantly left and went to the living room again. As time passes and we live in the house longer, my fear for the room grows larger and larger. I actually didn't even sleep in the room for the first six years we lived there because of how afraid I'd become of it. The room gave me such a bad feeling, and being young at the time it was either my imagination or it was a genuine feeling that the room gave me. My room is across the hall from the bathroom. When my bedroom door and bathroom door are open, you can see through my room through the bathroom mirror. The first thing I actually encountered was a few months after we moved in. It was during the summer, I believe. It was my two cousins, my brother and I. We were in the bathroom washing our hands, and at the same time my brother had happened to be looking in the mirror into my room. We see this black shadowy figure float through my room and go through my bedroom door. My heart dropped and I looked to see if any of them had seen the figure, and I was relieved that my brother witnessed it as well because I had been telling my parents that I was afraid of my room, but of course nobody believes a child when they talk about ghosts or spirits. Time passes and I still do not sleep in my room. I only become more concerned as to why we saw that figure. I kept telling myself it was nothing. The house couldn't be haunted because we're the only ones to live in this house. The only thing that I could think of was to why we saw the figure was a few weeks prior to the incident. My older cousin forced us to play a game in the dark in my room. The game went like this. We had to lay on the floor with our head on our lap and have our eyes closed, and everyone had to touch a body part like an arm or a leg. She made us repeatedly chant something while she was asking the question laying in her lap, what do you see? And basically telling them to visualize the thing she was saying. I remember her saying about a man and a cat. She was saying that the cat will scratch our backs when we wake up, and every single one of us had scratches on our backs. We were so shocked. At the time I would say we were all around 7 to 8 years old, and her being the oldest at 15. The game terrified me, but I just blew it off and continued to stay out of my room. Fast forward, 2010. I hit middle school and go through that MySpace phase and want to be left alone, so I decide to sleep and stay in my room. I remember getting over the fear I once had of my room and just decided to put all of that fear in the past. I can't remember anything paranormal happening from 2010 to 2012, but in 2013 I had one of the scariest experiences of my life. I was on my bed laying on my stomach facing the headboard while I was on my laptop. My room was dark and my door was shut. All of the sudden at the foot of my bed my ankles. All of the sudden I... All of the sudden at the foot of my bed by my ankles. I felt my bed get sunken in as if someone was sitting on the edge of the bed. At that time I brushed it off because I thought maybe I didn't hear my brother or my dad walk in and them just coming in to be noisy to see what I was doing on the laptop. I pay it no mind too and continue scrolling on Facebook. 30 seconds later I feel the bed get sunken by something much heavier than what I felt before and this time it felt like it was right next to the side of my stomach as if someone was leaning in closer to see what I was doing. I pause, look back into my horror there was nothing or no one there. Just absolute darkness besides the faint light from my computer. At that moment I knew I had to get the fuck out of there. It felt like the longest steps I had ever taken to get from my bed to the door. I got out of my room and rushed to tell my parents, but to no surprise they didn't believe me. 
That night I slept on the couch. I was beyond terrified and I was up all night on my phone with my boyfriend, trying to make sense of what happened. The shit hit me like a ton of bricks when I had to come to reality, face the fact that there was something in my room that wasn't human. That encounter takes a cake of everything that's happened to me thus far. Skip ahead four years to 2017. It was one summer night at around 1 a.m. and I remember being afraid and I felt like I was being watched. I turned my body towards the window and tried falling asleep. My room was not completely dark. There was light peeking from the hallway because my door was cracked and I had a nightlight plugged in. So I'm already anxious trying to get some sleep and just praying in my head waiting to doze off as I hear scratching at the foot of my bed. I call for my dog's name because maybe it was him trying to get on my bed. Normally his nails scratch along the bed when trying to do so. After I called his name twice I had to swallow the fact that it wasn't him, gain the courage to run out of my room and tell my parents. I literally cried to them about what I had just heard and they really didn't have much to say but to pray. I felt like for once after all of these years they finally believed me. I was so scared and honestly over being afraid of whatever it was that was in my room. That night I fell asleep with my lamp on and my door wide open, praying that this would just all go away. Since then those have been the most traumatic encounters. One last thing that happened to me that should have scared me but didn't was back in November of 2016. Everyone was asleep and everyone's room was upstairs. I went downstairs and was on FaceTime with my cousin. I end up making my way back upstairs when I realize that the downstairs bathroom light is on. Red flag. We have motion lights in all of the bathrooms in our house and in order for them to go on and stay on, there must be motion to trigger it. Nobody was downstairs with me and I didn't hear anyone come down to use the bathroom. To make matters worse, the bathroom door was shut. As I make my way upstairs, I tell my cousin that the bathroom light is on, the door is shut. Nobody is in there and nobody went in there. She just made things worse by scaring me even more. I go upstairs and stay in our loft for about 10 minutes and then go back to check if it was still on, and it was. I was a little anxious, I'm not going to lie, but I kind of felt like there was a reason behind it. My grandfather suddenly passed away in August of 2016 in his home and we found him in his bathroom. My grandpa had his own home and would come to mine on the weekends where he had a bed and a bathroom, the downstairs bathroom. I guess I didn't feel scared because I felt as if it was him saying he was okay or maybe trying to send a little signal. I don't know but it made me feel some type of inner peace like he was saying goodbye. After this incident it occurred at least five more times and it would randomly happen during the day and night. I remember once I was helping my mom cook and I was going to use the bathroom and the light was on with the door shut. I rushed to tell my mom. She just smiled and said, It's grandpa. Story number two. I'm 18 now, but when I was in seventh grade I was at my friend's house staying the night. He lived in a pretty rough side of town but we were too ignorant to any danger. Around midnight, we decided to walk to a gas station about two miles from his house, just to have something to do. We always like to freak each other out on these little late night walks, so I told him we should walk through the forest on the way to the gas station. With no hesitation, he made a sharp turn and walked directly into the trees. I followed and we began to try and make each other fearful as we would ask. Did you hear that? Obviously nothing was there until one time we weren't talking and heard a loud snap, like someone stepping on a branch. Instantly we stopped and looked at each other, then began to bust out laughing because how scared we got. We continued walking and eventually got out of the trees to the dimly lit street. I live in a small town so there was only a small hotel and a bar in front of us. We continued walking when all of a sudden my friend nudged me, asked me if I had noticed the person behind us. 
Once again thinking he was trying to scare me, I told him to shut up. But when he looked at me, I could tell he wasn't kidding. I glanced over my shoulder and he wasn't kidding. There was a person about 50 feet behind us. It was too dark and they were too far away to see any features, but the silhouette was definitely there. I whispered to my friend that we should go to that hotel and to not look back again. We eventually stepped into the light coming from the sign of the hotel and checked. Sure as shit, it was still behind us. We looked at each other and made the decision that we should get to that gas station and fast. We continued walking and I glanced over my shoulder. The person had walked into the hotel and we were now alone. I called my friend a pussy and we laughed as we were reaching the gas station. Inside we bought some drinks, laughed off the situation, and decided we should keep walking to our other friend's house, about a mile away. We began walking when I felt like someone was following us. I turned around and that's when I saw it. The same person had somehow caught up, was only 10 feet behind us, this time fully lit up. A tall lanky figure draped in brown clothes loomed over us. My eyes crept up and that's when I realized there was no face, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, nothing. Just a faceless person. We both dropped our drinks and bolted to the nearest public place. Thankfully, we saw some cop cars and ran to them. We stopped and looked back. The person had now crossed the street, but its head was fixed on us. The body sideways, but the head still looking at us. The creature walked straight into the trees like we had done so earlier. And as fast as it started, it was over. Story number three. When I was 15, my mom, my younger sister, and I were living in a not-so-nice apartment. My mom took the couch and my sister and I got the bedrooms. I got first choice in bedrooms, so obviously I chose the one with the window. So, there was the main floor which was the lobby, and then the floor above was considered the first floor. I mention this because every other apartment I've lived in, the first floor was the first floor. Outside the apartment windows were fire escapes, with a landing on the first floor above the lobby. It was summer and about 4 a.m. when I was laying in my bed trying to sleep with the lights off, when from the moonlight I noticed something out my window. A flashlight clicks on and it's a man in maybe his late 30s. I throw the blanket over myself and I don't move because I'm terrified. He starts looking around my room with the flashlight which felt like minutes, but in reality it was maybe 60 seconds. Then he just left. I don't know where he went, and as far as I know he didn't come back. The next morning when leaving the building the police were there. There was a pile of blood on the stairs between the lobby and the first floor. I have no idea if it was related. It's been 15 years, so I'm not sure I'll ever know. To the man outside my window with a flashlight, let's not meet. Story number four. This happened when I was 12 years old. It was in the middle of the night at my house. My dad would work the graveyard shift at his job. Since it was the weekend, I had stayed up most of the night. It was somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m. My dad had told me to lock the doors and to go to sleep, which I did. I went to my room and finally went to sleep, but only for about an hour. At around 2 a.m. I woke up to the sound of knocking on my back door. It scared me awake after taking a few moments to process what I heard. I decided it was probably just my dad knocking on the door. Maybe he'd just forgotten something. Me being really exhausted, I knew he had a house key on him, so I just told myself he'd unlock the door himself. But the knocking continued. It was pretty creepy. The next thing I knew the knocking stopped, and then it started again but at a different location. Someone was knocking on the window in my kitchen. I continued to assure myself it was my dad. I didn't understand why he couldn't just unlock the door himself. He always had a key on him. I felt pretty freaked out so I wasn't answering the door. 
If anything, my dad would call me to open the door on my phone, which was right next to me. The knocking started again at another window. I was terrified now, too scared to get up and check who was out there. The knocking wasn't stopping and the next thing I know the knocking moved to my front door at a harsher level. That's when it hit me that I couldn't move. I was frozen in fear. I couldn't scream or talk or move any muscle. My heart was dropping as the knocking moved to another window closer, closer to my bedroom window where my curtains were see-through. I still couldn't move. I didn't know what to do or say. I could only stay out as my fear consumed me. I moved my eyes over to the window. My heart stopped when I saw a man peering through my window. A tall man with a dark ski mask. I could hardly make out the details because it was so dark, but I think his mask had some sort of skeleton design on it. He tilted his head slightly. I tried to scream, but nothing came out of me. I close my eyes hard and start telling myself it's not real, over and over again. I open my eyes and there's no one there. I sigh to relief, until I heard a loud whisper tell me, I'll cut you. Everything suddenly stopped. I could finally move again, not long after. I really couldn't sleep anymore that night. It didn't feel like a dream. I never experienced sleep paralysis before, and everything felt so real. I don't know what had happened, but I pray I'll never have to experience that again. It was the most frightening moments in my life that I've ever dealt with. I think it was real. I was home alone that day, so nobody could back me up. But the following morning I asked my dad when he came from work if he had came back earlier that night and knocked on my doors and windows. He didn't. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Email your true scary stories to the sinful savant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below as well. Till we meet again, stay sinful.